Hello everyone. I thought I'd do a quick startup video for us since we don't have um, a regular meeting time, uh, seeing as we are a uh, an asynchronous course here, so we don't have any real meetup times. Um, and I thought maybe I'd better make sure we have some way to kind of kickstart this course, kind of like our first day of class, but I'll be brief about it. Uh, just kind of run through some of the essential things. Uh, related to syllabus and and really just getting around in canvas uh, to kind of know what you're doing and how to get going how to uh, see if I can bootstrap you in this court to get course to get things up and running so let's swap over I'm going to swap over to my browser and we're going to take a, a brief look through canvas um, so you can see how to kind of navigate the course so here is my view of canvas which will be different than yours um, i wanted to start here at home which is how you will log in so when you log in you will hit this page and we are in sys 101 uh section 710 principles of computing in this course um, uh, i have arranged all of my computer science courses in this same format so whether you're in sys 101 or 103 106 or 108, um, I have set up Canvas so that it's the same format in all of them. The content's different, but the format, the way I have this thing um, kind of put together is the same on all of them. So what I first have at the top, you'll notice, is something called Sys 101 Hangout up here. This is a Discord group that you can um, subscribe to. And uh, the, the idea there is that this discord group and 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 oh, by the way uh sys one all all my courses 101 103 106 and 108 all have um access to this group and it turns out it's the same group and that's by design because i'm kind of looking for that group to be or this meeting uh, area hangout area to be kind of like an open lab if we were on main campus um uh, typically, there would be a computer science lab, and people from all all of computer science would be there, not specifically one particular course or the other. This allows everyone to kind of intermingle, and you may find people in that hangout who have had Sys 101 already, and, and kind of that are not in Sys 101 right now. They're in some other course, but they know how to do um, a lot of the things that you're you're trying to do. So it's possible you can get help. Um, if, if we kind of run this like a lab, so um, you'll notice when you log into here that all groups are there. You can look at the Sys 101 group specifically, or you can go into um, if you're looking for someone else who's maybe not in Sys 101, you might try Sys 103. But it could be any of them, right? Sys 106, 108. They could be anywhere in there. They're just kind of hanging out in that hangout grouped together, right? So they're separate but um, together. So hopefully, uh, I'm kind of looking for that to happen in there, or at least providing the ability for that to happen if it were to happen. That you could just appear in that Hangout and click on that link. You'll have to register, I believe. Um, sometimes I pop in there. Generally speaking, I, 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 you're not going to find me in there, right? Because I don't just hang out here all day long in the, <laughs> the Discord group. Um, but uh, maybe you could pop in there and you never know. There could be anyone from any class in there. Maybe somebody could help. Um, anytime we have a meeting, which would be happening during office hours. Let's look at office hours first and then we'll come back to this Zoom link meeting here. Tuesday, Thursday, 1230 to 130. All right, but what's really important here is the star there and by appointment so I, I understand that not everyone will be able to meet wait a minute i didn't switch back over yet okay that's fine let me just do it real quick there we go sorry about that there's the hangout that i was talking about right there right so just click on that link and you'll go to the hangout that i started to talk about office hours since we're asynchronous, this is kind of important. Um, to officially, I've set 12:30 to 1:30 on Tuesday, Thursday. I did that intentionally over the uh, common hour time, hoping that 
that that would give the most number of people uh, free time potentially except i do know that UNIV meets during those times so the only people that might have a real problem with this are first semester freshmen but they're the only ones who have UNIV and then of that smaller cohort of people only those students who are meeting UNIV meets only one day a week right neither Tuesday or Thursday or Monday or Wednesday right one day a week so a smaller cohort of people first semester freshmen may meet on Tuesday during this time so there is a possibility there could be a conflict here or you know maybe you just can't make it at this time I don't know um, so we always we can solve this problem uh, by in the meeting at some other time and I'm, I'm pretty flexible with this other time shoot me an email all right and we'll try to set up a time a lot of times all you really need if you're contacting me um, in need of some sort of help I'd say I don't know 90 percent of the time it really is just a little bit of help you need just to get uh, you just hit a road bump or something a little bump in the road and you just need a little bit of help getting past this small problem that you might be having now it can happen that there's something more fundamentally wrong something that's going like you're you're really having a misunderstanding and we're going to need some time and that's fine too but I, I do know that a lot of times it's just a little bit of direction is what you need to get back on track or to get over a bump that you might be stuck in you know, stuck, you know around so a lot of times it only takes a couple of minutes five minutes you know a lot of times five minutes and, and you're back up and running so um I, I don't mind at all doing that by appointment i don't mind doing by appointment even if it's going to take us two hours right so that's completely wide open this time hopefully if you pop in 12 30 to 1 30 on tuesday or thursday that at least you could check in and make sure that we're all still alive we could all just see that we're all still alive and moving forward since we don't meet in class that is nice to know uh we just kind of say hi and move on um, or if you have a problem, I can quick answer your your your, your problem and and move along. Um, everything's pretty laid out though, and and um, so for the most part, you really just keep following the structure that I have laid out, and I have it laid out in the modules. So I have, uh, and we're gonna look at the modules next. Well, let's just go there. So on my view you'll be able to see all of our modules for the whole semester on yours you won't be able to see them all but you can see we're going to cover a lot of stuff as i'm scrolling down here you won't see all of this in yours right off the bat but you you ultimately that's what will all appear for you over the course of the semester and it's arranged by week right week one week two week three so we're starting here at week one this is what you're going to see every week a new one will appear they usually appear on something like Sunday due dates are typically gonna for things are typically gonna be on Sundays Sunday night at midnight so Monday morning we kind of start fresh for the week that would be week two would be the following you know each each time it starts over this first thing would happen on a Monday um, things will be available once they they come live they, they'll be there forever uh, you you won't be able to just, submit things at any time throughout the semester there is a due date for things that are going to get submitted but you these these uh videos that are that are here which in this case are, are a whole list of them here will be available throughout the semester so if you get stuck on something you need to come back and look at a video again you could all these will still be available it's just that the due date for something that you're so you should be turning in will expire yeah that that due date will expire and so we just follow week by week the next one pops up and we just go week by week and for instance you open up the first one of the first week it has a, a to-do date i'll speak to that to-do date really quickly yours might look a little bit different than mine because i'm looking at the creator's view here and so but it's going to be very similar it's going to rhyme so then you just kind of follow the instructions here and then there's a video that, that kind of walks through it as well that i put together so here in the first week I use the modules I mean, a lot of people will just use the to-do menu to do things uh, but I, I kind of like the modules myself but when I click on the module I can see everything that's available for the week you will see 
to-do dates are there. Uh, I have to put to-do dates on them or they get, when they get displayed in the calendar, uh, Canvas calendar, they don't go in order. So I, in order to force them to go in an order, I have to put a due date to do, to do, not do, to do. So um, they, I want them in order. So I have, for instance, here, what I have written is August 29, 30, 31, 30, these don't have to be in order, 31. That's because I, I, they need to be done top down in that order, right? This has to be the first thing that gets done. So I need to put a to-do date on it that precedes anything else. Otherwise, I can't guarantee Candace, Canvas will display this particular activity before this one. Do you see what I'm saying? Or this one, which is more important. Yeah, so you have to do them in order. And I need them, to, so therefore I need them to display in order. Therefore, I have to put to do, they're called in quotes there, I'll put to do um, dates on them. That doesn't mean that you have to, to do this one on the 29th. Right. It means it'd be a good idea to do it on the 29th, but you could put that off and do both of these on the 30th. But it does mean that this one should be done before this one. Right? That these two should be done before this one. Right. So they should be done in order. This one, this this last one here, you see how it's a, the icon's a little bit different. It's an assignment. It's got a, it's a piece of paper like the other ones kind of, but it has a pencil on it. So the last one in the series is always the thing that's going to get submitted. And that date is not a to-do date, but a due date. So this is the date you want it to submit this by midnight on September 4th in this case. You'll see it in your to-do menu list. I think you will. And you can see the point value here is 50 points. So you could kind of tell in two different ways. Either the you can look at the icon, you know, that's something that's submittable, or you can see that. See, how, notice how these don't have a, a point value to them. Because they're just, these are the things that if we were meeting in class, these are the things that would have lectures on the whole way down. Interestingly enough, though, we, you would, <laughs> we would be working pretty much the same way, where I'm kind of explaining to you something to do, then you have to do it on your computer. And... Um, uh, it will progress pretty much the same way that it will here in the Zoom, using Zoom asynchronously. asynchronously. Okay, so that's the general format. And then it just, just happens over and over and over, right? Boom, boom, boom. There it is once again. And there's the one that's got 50 points on it with the pencil there. So this is something that you're going to submit. And it's due September 11th. And this one, same way. Every time it's the same way, same pattern. Now, I'd like to just mention here also while I'm talking about the same pattern is happening, I've arranged the other courses the same way, the other courses that I have for computer science. So it's just 101, 103, 106, and 108 are all set up with this same format. So if you were to take one of the next courses, my sequence of courses, then you'd be following the same format in, in, uh, in, in Canvas where we each week opens up, there's a bunch of things to do throughout the week. There's a, a video associated with each one of those things. You want to do them in order. The very last thing is something to be submitted. This this is the general format of, of the way I've set up my courses. Now the content's different, largely. There, there is overlap, especially between 101 and 103, uh, because some of the courses are very, I mean, these are very uh, fundamental courses here, right? So they have concepts here that are very, very fundamental to computer science at large. The use of Unix. We're going to have to learn it very early in computer science because every single course in the entire sequence of computer science, all the way up through 800 level courses, all use Unix. So <laughs> at some point or other, we're going to have to learn how to use Unix because we're going to continue to use it forever, right? And, and so something like this is very fundamental to computer science. And that's why we're doing it here in this, this course. All right, so that's the general format. We'll come on through. These are all submittable each each week. We go through these things. These submittables come up. We're gonna eventually, we're gonna hit um, Thanksgiving. Is there something wrong there? Oh no no no! 
we, we need a midterm first. It doesn't because uh, in, in the fall semester, Thanksgiving is almost at the end of the semester, right? So our midterm happens well before. I was for some reason thinking of spring, uh, which you know, uh, spring break is the middle of the semester, but over fall, Thanksgiving is not the middle of the semester. So we're going to have to, uh, we're going to hit in week seven here. We have 14 weeks total, so seven weeks through. We'll have a midterm. I traditionally do a project for this midterm um, because it really works out well. And so what you'll do with the midterm project is create your own project. We're going to be doing web development all through here. So you'll be build, building, learning how to build a website, how to effectively, yeah, and it'll be on a computer at school. That's a Unix machine. It's on main campus at Rhodes. And so what you're going to do for your project is just create something that showcases all the things that you've learned previously. That's the idea. All right. And then when we get back from, well, uh, then we're going to start after the midterm. This will be for a week. You have a week to do it. And then we'll be, we'll start with the second half of the course, right, which will be markedly different than the first half. So in the first half of SIS 101, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be learning about Unix, doing some web development, some styling of web pages, <coughs> and maybe some other things. I'm, I'm not sure, but pretty much that's it. That's the bulk of it. And then, um, so that's web development, HTML, no programming though. And then, um, We'll have the midterm, and then we'll start with application development, where we're going to use a piece of software called Alice to help us uh, with the code. Um, we're going to use Alice. It's a software that was built by Carnegie Mellon um, because uh, when, when writing software, uh, it, it's easy to get a little too hung up in... Let me jump back on here. It's very easy for... I'm, I'm all out of focus. Maybe it'll straighten itself out. There we go. It's very easy for students to get hung up in the syntax of a programming language. Um, in much the same way it is with uh, spoken language or natural languages. Like where, like it, it can be real problematic to know whether to use a colon, a semicolon, where should the period go really, kind of, or is it going to be a run-on run -on sentence if I use a comma here? Should I use a period? Maybe a semicolon? These are syntax issues, right? And uh, punctuation. And um, it's it's very easy to get hung up on those kind of issues uh, in software, just as well as if you're writing an essay for, for someone. And we don't, that, that's real problematic because really as very, as introductory programmers, we want to really learn about the logic uh, of programming. More so than punctuation, I guess I'm going to say, it's syntax. Oh, I missed the curly bracket somewhere in that I hope my whole program doesn't work now because of that missing curly, bra uh, curly bracket. And and this becomes a, a it really hinders a, a student's ability, especially in the beginning, to to learn how to program just uh, from a kind of a, from a fundamental level. Can't see the forest from the trees winds up being kind of the problem. So we're going to use this software called Alice because it allows us to drop, drag and drop code. And then the student who's using Alice can focus more on the logic that's being applied than the syntax of a particular language. So I don't have to worry so much about colons, semicolons, curly brackets, right? Exclamation points, things like that. Uh, maybe missing or I've misspelled something, right? These are all problems with essays when you're, when you're, when you're writing an essay, right? It'd be nice if you could just drag and drop sentences that were already assembled. <laughs> then you just assemble, you can put them together in a meaningful order. And so that's what Alice attempts to do. And so we're going to use that uh, to kind of get a feeling for how applications are developed. Uh, software that you'll install on your computer. So back to the thing. That's the second half of, of, uh, of this course. So that'd be the second quarter. And then we'll do the same thing with the final. Uh, that is, then you'll create an Alice project and submit that. You submit that online. And then you'll have the, the last week to, to put that together. Again, remember the due dates. Uh, these are to do. T-O dash D-O. To do. Not D-U-E. 
This is a DUE date. That's different than a DO date, <laughs> right? All right, so you'll be able to check your grades. You'll be able to check. I don't, what's happened? Oh, it's just slow. My machine's slow right now. So everyone's here. There's nobody has any grades, so I'm not worried about. Actually, I don't even have anybody in this pool. Oh, there they are. So there you guys all are. You won't see all of this. Remember, you're looking at my view, which is different than your view. But you'll be able to scroll across the to top here and see all the grades for the for the whole semester each time one comes in. At the end, eventually, there's a total here, and that's what you're concerned about. They all they all play a part, right? So uh, don't get too hung up too early. Remember, there are due dates, and we have a lot of these, right? Oh, there, 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 over and over and over. Week after 14, 14, uh, actually less than 14 because we have a midterm and a final. So, but, but imagine when this thing's calculating your final grade, if you had gotten, I mean, I'm just throwing this out. There's no reason for this to happen, this for, especially to the very first assignment. It's super, super easy. But imagine that if you got a, a, a 10 on, or, or let's just say a zero, if you, got a, if you didn't submit this, then the only thing the software has to do to create or to tally that final grade is that one grade, which is zero. So you're going to look on the end here and it's going to be like zero F. Right. And then people will oftentimes will freak out about something like that. So, well, you know, that, that is just the very first one and it's only a 50 pointer. I mean, I know 50 points. It takes, seems like a lot, but it depends on what they all are. Some of them, there's a lot of them. But you just remember that it's when it's calculating, there's still room to go, right? You can still make changes to it. So then you get 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 after that zero. It's going to modify your grade when as those 50s come in, become part of the calculation for final or total grade, right? So that's something to keep in mind as you're watching this. I don't expect zeros here. I, I'm just, this is just a, uh, an example I just came up with here while I was talking about this. I expect that everyone's going to have a 50 right here. You're just going to make a screenshot of something that you've done and submit it. And that's it. But I will say that as we're going through here, let's let's go back to, I'll go back to the modules. Oh, shit. Well, I got to do it this way. So let's look at this one. Uh, mine's going to look completely different. So let's just go off of uh, something like syllabus. Yeah, that's a good one to look at. Go with the syllabus. Now, if you click on this link here, you'll see the, I guess, official syllabus, which is kind of what I want to do. Boy, my, my computer is really running slow. And that is really small. Coming up with some small font here. Huh? <coughs> All right, so you can go through the syllabus if you want. Um, and then there's the grading here. Midterm project. 25%, finals 25%, so that's half your final grade, and then all of those little projects are, are worth 50%. What do you mean 50? You mean 12, so I guess there's 12 of those, right? Well, there's 12 of those. So you have plenty of, no sing, and another thing to note here when you're looking at it, no single grade here is enough to kill you, right? Well, I mean, this one, no, that's tough. Yeah, that you'd have to, in order to lose 50% of your grade, you'd have to get a zero on every single lap. So when you start getting zero after zero after zero, that means what's likely happening here is you're not turning something in on time, missing, 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 missing. That will add up. Uh, but for instance, you could blow the final completely, get a zero on it, and still get a 75 in the course. The same with the midterm. I've set this up so that no single grade is going to kill you. So I'm looking at it as percentages now. So if you got a zero on 
on half of these, you would lose 25% of your grade, right? Half of those would be zeros. You'd still get a 75 in the course. So there's no reason, I guess what I'm trying to get at here on, on these individual labs, there's no reason to freak out over a single bad grade. You'd have to lose half of them and you'd still get, with, with a good midterm and final, you'd still get a 75 in the course. So when, when people are failing the course, it's because almost all of them, they've not turned in anything or they've missed a whole bunch of those and the midterm or the final. Like you almost have to work at it. <laughs> you have to intentionally not do things <coughs> to, in order to be able to actually fail the course. That, that It seems almost impossible to me, although it happens. So I'm just saying, you know, just kind of keep up with stuff. So the one thing that could, can get you this this losing half your 50% here with, with zeros is turning these labs in late. So what's going to happen is, well, well, let's just go down this section here because the grading part is really all anyone really cares about on the syllabus looks, right? So there's no extra credit. So at the end, you can't all of a sudden at the end of, of the semester, we're all trying to pack up to go for Christmas. And then, and, and then someone is suggesting that they want to make up uh, 10 of the labs that they missed. Like that, that's just not, not possible, right? We're not doing that. There is no extra credit. If you miss something, you miss it. It's just, you missed it. Make it up, make it up by, by not missing anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, the projects are the same way. You can't make those up. Just like you can't, if you miss a midterm, you really can't make it up. And, and I mean, unless there's some sort of university excuse, right? That, that could happen. It's something serious, but I, I forgot it. That doesn't work. It doesn't work on any other class either. Just because we're online doesn't mean we, we're using different rules in that respect. Uh, it's particularly precarious around both midterm and final. Uh, but midterm, when something is due, I've got a due date set. It's an, I, I should bring this up as well. There's a due date for the midterm project at 5 o'clock on Friday just before Thanksgiving break. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Now, whatever that project is, i gotta I got to look back on this again. Be mindful of it, though, right uh, at midterm and final, because um, at midterms, yeah, it is a Friday that it's due. I'm sorry, it didn't have anything to do with Thanksgiving. It's just that it's due on a Friday, the midterm. So I have it set to be due on, I believe it's Friday at 5. You want to double check this, though, to make sure. I really am just trying to express here why this is precarious. Uh, I have to have the midterms submitted by midnight Friday. So when you don't submit, or if you don't submit I have midterm grades, I have to have submitted to UBSIS. So you, when you don't submit by, by 5, I can't submit by 12. But I will submit. I'll just submit with a zero. All right? So what I'm saying is... <laughs> There's, there's other things that are, that when you're doing these timings, or when I have these due dates set, it's because one thing leads to another, just like in the modules, right? And, and so one thing has to happen before another thing can happen. So particularly on that midterm, and same thing happens with the final, right? I have to have the final grades in. So I just had this summer, I just had someone uh, in, was it the mid, mid or the end of July? something like that, looking to figure out if they could submit the final, right? It's like, well, I mean, it's July. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's just, it's, that's craziness. I, I think that's craziness. I think you would agree with me and, unless, you know, there becomes a situation that you're in that's then, then suddenly it's okay. But that, that can't happen, right? There's a due date there for a reason when, when it's there. Now, the, the other ones that are not midterm and final, the regular labs, those can be submitted late, but there's going to be a penalty. Um, it's 10% it's, uh, per day, which amounts to five points. They're worth 50 points, so that's five points per day. So you're going to lose five points late penalty every day that it's late. So you could effectively be late 10 days and still get something. 
beyond 10 days, it's like that's that's plenty, right? There's no there's no more. Those will turn into a zero. Okay, so we want to try to get things in on time, but it's super crucial with the midterm and at the final. Because I've run those I've run those, I wouldn't really understand this. I've run those right to the last minute, as it is. I then from from five o'clock to I have to go from five o'clock to midnight to get grades in for all of my courses before I before that deadline expires. So I'm pushing myself right to the end of my limit. I'm gonna need a couple of hours to go through and get everybody's grades together and get them entered in the UDSIS and submitted for each of my classes. Right. So, you know, there's a reason why this due date is firm. And there's a reason why this due date is firm. It's because we do have to work within the schedule of the university. The labs due dates, there's a little more flexibility there. But uh, at the end of the day, it eventually does have to get turned in. You can't just turn them all in on the last day of classes. I've had people try that too. They want to submit all. 12 labs and the final and the midterm all on the last day of class <laughs> i mean that, that's just not going to happen like that it's not going to happen it's not going to work i don't know how you can do that anyway but people seem to suggest they can and you'll see as we're going through that there's way too much work to to be able to accomplish that it's, it's interesting ironic that we have people that are unable to turn things in on time, yet other people think that they can do everything all in one day. Somehow, one of them's not correct. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Let's just not get in that situation, all right? <clears throat> everything, all of the labs can be done in one week. There's no doubt about it. Even if you have to slip it a little bit, there's barely any, uh, any penalty. It's only five points per day. And we know that you can lose a whole lab and it's not going to have a, a, an enormous impact on your final grade. Right, so let's just get things in on time. And if it's not on time on one of these, then this is not show a pattern of that happening. Right. These are painful if you miss, if you don't get them in on time. And they, they can't be submitted late. And that's stated. I want really be clear about there this there's no makeup there's no makeup there on those without a, a, a universal i mean a, a university approved excuse that i lost that whole section there it is there's got to be some kind of university approved excuse for that because it's a real problem Right? And, and everyone's going to be like this in all classes, not just me. There is a point when you've got to get done what you've got, to, what you're doing, and you've got to submit it. Okay, so you, we don't need to have long discussions well after the semester's over about how it is that you should be able to have special rights here, I guess, and be able to turn in things late after they were supposed to be here and everyone else is finished it's, it's massively unfair to everyone in class for me to be allowing things like that and i'm not going to do that but if somebody gets some sort of special uh treatment then everybody needs that same treatment and if i am accepting things late for one person everyone has to be accepted late right i think that we would all agree to that I don't think it's unreasonable. So just don't do it. Just don't turn anything in. Just don't turn in stuff late, and and you, and you we won't have this situation. So that's it on the syllabus. I don't want to talk about the syllabus. Anymore. I'm sure you don't want to hear about it either. So let's just go back to Canvas. All right. So what you're going to see is week one is a lot of week one, or basically all of it is getting software installed on your computer that we're going to be using throughout the first half of the semester so we have some any connect vpn client software we we need this software installed to be able to connect to the university of delaware in newark's um 
computing systems. It will not allow us. We're going to use a particular computer there called Copeland. Its name's Copeland. It's located at the University of Delaware, I believe in Smith Hall. And we want to connect to it from our computer, from our machine in front of us. We're going to connect to and remote control that machine as if we were at Smith Hall in Newark sitting in front of that machine. We're going to operate that machine. And in order to be able to do that, we need a couple of pieces of software. One of them is a VPN client, which ensures that it, it what it ultimately what it does is it makes it uses your credentials, your using the uh, logger, uh, your login credentials to the university to make your home network a part of UD network. So it appears that you are to the UD network. It appears to Copeland that you are sitting somewhere on campus, like, I don't know, Morris Library or something. Like you're, you're on a university machine. Right? That's why we need this. So that you can make your home network a part of UD network. So as long as this thing is connected and running, the UD machines will see your machine as one of its own. As if you're part of that network. <coughs> or then we're going to need um, to use one of these two. Putty if you're on Windows, or we'll just use the, the terminal if you're on Mac to issue commands on the machine, right? So we'll we'll use we'll have to connect to Copeland using one of these two machines. This machine or this software here, the VPN client, just makes our network or your network. A part of the UD network. It doesn't connect you to any particular machine. It makes your network, uh, you you become your home network becomes a part of UD's network. This is software. One of these is software that we're going to use to actually make a connection to a particular machine called Copeland. Right. And so there's videos associated with those as well, and every one of these has a video associated with it. And then there's some network settings stuff you'll see as we go through the videos. I don't want to go through every single one of these because it's all in the video. But, so I'm on the syllabus here, though. Um, but it's okay that these things are just showing on the syllabus because of the to-do date. There it is. It's to-do. And there is we have Dubai. See how it's different? That's the thing that you're going to submit screenshot. Okay, so shouldn't we, it's not too confusing. We just want to do them in order and then submit something. And then the following week, do them in order and then submit something. Dubai. So I'm looking from multiple different angles here and I keep seeing the same thing. I say I'm, I'm on syllabus, looking at things from the syllabus, which probably, I don't know if anybody wants to use that one or not. Really, the only thing I cared about here was the actual syllabus, right? That's why I came onto this page. But we can do back to modules, which is the way I typically look at this. So here's each of those that we were just looking at in syllabus. So Chromebook. You know, it's not a good idea. I, there have been students who have tried to use Chromebook in this course and in other courses. And it, it's kind of painful. I mean, it's more than kind of. It's pretty darn painful. It's very difficult to install software on the, crane, uh, on the Chromebook that, that works properly um, with these systems. It really wasn't meant for this. So we're trying to force it to do something that it wasn't really built to do. Really, a Chromebook is just internet access. I do. I know that you can install software on it, applications. But it really is, it's, in, it's intended to just be a, a, a web usage machine. And, and anytime we're installing software on here and, and trying to do other things beyond just the internet, we are pushing its limits. And it really is difficult. <laughs> like I can tell you that every step along the way with this Chrome, with a Chromebook is just 
far more challenging with a Chromebook than it is with a Mac or a, a, a Windows machine. So even just installing this VPN client, it requires another subset here. If you have a Chromebook to try and figure it out. And then every step along the way, the same thing happens with a Chromebook. It's different than both the, both the Windows machine and the Mac, and it's more challenging in every step. So every single step along the whole way is going to be far more challenging with a, with a, with a, uh, a Chromebook. And then we do have a situation here in this course, it's just 101, when we switch to when well, we switch to Alice, that there is no version of Alice that was built for a Chromebook. So I'm glad that we look back on this these modules just so we could kind of so I could notice that right and kind of make a warning. So if you have a Chromebook, you should try to see if you can get your hands on it, either a Mac or a, a or a or a yeah, or Windows machine just to be able to do this course because this is painful and i've worked with students who are quite computer computer savvy in the past and that's why they have the chromebook in the first place i suppose i'm not sure but they were quite computer savvy and they struggled the whole way through i mean tooth and nail hard so i don't i'm not sure i probably should just be saying don't use a chromebook and what I'm instead saying is just recognize that if you're using a Chromebook, you're going to have significant struggles through um, the entire course. So take with that what you will. In Windows, we'll use Putty. In Mac, we'll use Terminal. These, this software is one or the other. This software will get us connected to Copeland once we first have set our network up. Once your computer at home is your home network that your computer is on is connected to the UD network, uh, so it's kind of masquerading as a part of the UD network, then we can use one of these to connect to a computer that's on the UD network. So that's, and, and that'll be a Unix machine. And then there's some settings that will make things interesting. This is just a web setting. This is no big deal. You just log into the UD network, which you've done before. Uh, it's a web setting thing. You can do it through the web, via the web. And then you're just going to open up your putty or your, your once you get it all done. And this, you don't even have to have this one completed to be able to submit this one. Because this takes 24 hours to complete. Right? Once you do this one, the next day, um, I think it's overnight. It's not 24 hours. It takes overnight. The next day, this will reflect. The change that you make here will, will be reflected. Uh, so you wouldn't, if you did the screenshot before and overnight of doing this, then we won't see the results of what this does. But that's okay. It's all right. Um, so your screenshot will just be a screenshot of one of these softwares, depending on whether it's your Windows or Mac, opened and connected to Copeland on the UD network. So your screenshot here shows you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have the VPN client connected and one of these two things up and running and connected to Copeland. So what this shows, this screenshot, is that you have the software installed and you're ready to start going. From just the simple screenshot of you being connected to Copeland, I could tell that all of this stuff has been done. You wouldn't be able to do that if all of this wasn't done up and running. Okay, so that's our first week, and that'll get us running, and you'll start to get um, feeling a little bit better about it. And if you have any questions about anything, you certainly can catch me at my office hours. And I did miss one thing here I meant to say. On Tuesday or Thursday, from 12.30 to 1.30, right? Or by appointment, shoot me an email. We'll, we'll set up a time that works for all of us. And where will you meet me? Well, we'll go to this Zoom meeting. Anytime we're gonna meet, we're gonna go to that Zoom meeting. Right there, just click this link. That'll take you to my Zoom room.
you could pop in there anytime you want i mean you, you would like for me to be there i'm sure so either we set something up or you do a tuesday thursday uh it is nice to to just keep up with you guys so i do like when you pop in on tuesday or thursday even if you're just going to pop in for a second and say i'm still alive just check it in <laughs> i'm doing good i think i'm all right with everything or if you want to just pop in and you just need a question answered that will get you moving great do that yeah, i'm going to switch back to me and um that i think i hope that that's enough to kind of get us going uh for the semester at least it gets us going until we can get to a, a, another office hours so you'll be able to get started and you try to to accomplish some things um, and this, this is kind of the theme of all of my courses the way they, they work they kind of learn by doing it right so you might call if we wanted to attach some kind of academic words to this we might call it problem-based learning pbl right you, you, you it's hands-on you, you learn how to do these things by working with them uh, in much the same way that you work with your phone right you get a new phone if i got if i had a new phone um that i was giving to the class to use it's not as if you haven't used a phone before but maybe this is not an iphone or an android so you've never used this particular phone before right is it going to work for you in that situation this is something i think that you can relate to so going to work for you if i gave you a two-hour lecture with no my spoiler phone in front of you and then I send you home with a boyer phone. And you, then you're just supposed to remember what happened in the lecture or, or leave, look at your notes and, and try to figure out how to use that phone. Or is it better that we kind of have the phone in front of us and step by step you can tinker with it and I can answer questions as you move. You'll, you'll learn more this way, in my opinion. If you have the phone right there, tinker with it and, and um, kind of learn as you go. Rather than for me to give a big long lecture with all kinds of information and you don't even have your hands on the boy phone. <laughs> it's, I don't know how you're going to learn anything that way, right? But it works differently in different classes, right? This was a philosophy class or something. We don't have anything but the hands on. But here we do. <laughs> if this was auto mechanics and I was trying to teach you how to build a carburetor or rebuild a carburetor, it I need to have a carburetor in front of you, right? I think you'll agree to that. It's far better if the carburetor's in front of you, and then as I'm speaking, you can work with the carburetor. Then for me to just give you a long lecture with lots of stuff on the board, um, and then send you home with a carburetor, and you just go ahead and figure it out that way. It's like, Come on, let's do it. Let's do it together, together hands on, as we go, little by little. And you can tinker with it along the way. Right, and so I would encourage you to tinker as you go. Try things. You know it's not going to break anything. Come on, you've worked with computers long enough. You know you don't break them that easy. Sometimes stuff doesn't work the way you want it to. Then try something else. You know, just like if you were learning a new phone. Um, so I think that's enough to get us at least get us going. And I guess you'll have access to this early. So maybe if you have any more questions, you could pop in on Tuesday or Thursday this week and and we can talk about whatever you know you want to talk about and that's typically what we'll do <laughs> we'll talk about whatever you want usually we can I can fix problems usually pretty darn quickly it usually is something small I'm not sure if I should even say that because it's not always sometimes it's, it's a big problem but um, a lot of times your problem really is is pretty small you just hung up on something and if we can just push past that then boom you're up and running again so i encourage you to pop in whenever you feel like you're having some difficulty just pop in and a lot of times I'm, if i'm working even if i'm working with somebody else you'll be able to watch that and um, they're doing the same thing that you are so you'll be able to see if i'm fixing someone else's problem there's a good chance your problem is the same as theirs so you'll be able to see the problem right there getting fixed right in front of you. So I would encourage you to pop in on Tuesday or Thursday whenever you can. If nothing else, just say hi. <laughs> All right. I will end this and see you on Tuesday or Thursday.